Yes, living organisms, uh, welcome to our online uh, platform, the Ocean of Knowledge, Top Notch TV. Today, in our series, we talk of simple things. Your favorite living organism, Sir Bernard, talks about photosynthesis today. <clears throat> When we were growing up, we were told the plants are the source of energy because as consumers, we depend on the plants. But do plants depend on themselves? No. In nutrition, as a characteristic of living things, we recall that plants are autotrophs, we are heterotrophs. The main source of energy in any ecosystem is the sun because by the use of light energy plants convert the light energy in the process of photosynthesis to chemical energy stored in the plant tissues which then we get by feeding on the plants remember also we remind ourselves that in the process of photosynthesis for it to take place plants require carbon dioxide and water as the raw materials, water from the soil, the osmosis, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by diffusion through the stomata. In the process of light energy, photosynthesis takes place, producing sugars, largely carbohydrates stored in form of starch and oxygen. So, there are some factors that can affect the rate of photosynthesis, the rate of starch formation, which includes one, light intensity, because light is a source of energy, carbon dioxide concentration, because carbon dioxide is a raw material for the process, temperature, because photosynthesis as a metabolic process is enzyme controlled and the enzymes function well at optimum temperature. Chlorophyll concentration because chlorophyll as a pigment absorbs the light energy necessary for photosynthesis. For this session, by the end of this session, we will be able to explain how we can investigate and prove that light intensity affects the process of photosynthesis. Look at this small model illustration. In this simulation, I want us to focus on the beaker with water. We have the aquatic plant there in an inverted funnel. Let us observe what happens. Good. Now, in this simulation, we have bubbles being produced in the beaker. We have the lamb being moved closer. Target now, as the lamb is moved near to the water bath, the number of bubbles being produced increases. As the lamb moves closer, as the distance between the lamb and the water bath or the beaker is reduced, there is an increase in the number of bubbles being produced. We want to account for the observation or for that theory. What is the relationship between the distance between the lamb and the water bath or the setup and the number of bubbles being produced? The lamp, in this case, the lamp is our source of energy. And 
the bubbles being produced are indicating the process of photosynthesis. Why? The lamp, sorry, the bubbles being produced represent production of gas, which we know from photosynthesis is oxygen. And the distance between the lamp and the setup will represent light intensity because as you decrease the distance between the lamp and the setup, that means there is increase in light intensity because the lamp is moving closer to the setup. And as you increase the light intensity, you have increased production of bubbles, which indicates an increase in the rate of photosynthesis. That gives us a conclusion that Increase in light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis. Why is it that increase in the light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis? Because light is a source of energy during the reaction between carbon dioxide and water to form starch, that is carbohydrate. And specifically, light is used in the first stage of photosynthesis, the light-dependent stage. In this experiment, a few things to take into account or to remember. We have used an aquatic plant. Why? The aquatic plant, like now the, the a pondweed, can carry out photosynthesis at relatively lower light intensities and therefore it is convenient to give us results. Two, an aquatic plant is able to utilize carbon dioxide in solution form. The carbon dioxide which is dissolved in water unlike a uh, normal terrestrial plant. What is, what is the role of the thermometer. The thermometer is there basically to indicate maintaining an optimum temperature. Why? Temperature affects the rate of photosynthesis because of enzymatic activity. How did we tell the rate of photosynthesis in this setup? The rate of photosynthesis was measured by the number of bubbles or the the, the production of bubbles per unit time. You can talk of per minute, you can talk of per hour. But you can also measure the rate of photosynthesis by reading or by measuring the volume of gas that is being produced because as more gas is being produced, there will be a displacement of water in the inverted measuring cylinder. We have the timer there, which will assist you, of course, measure time. This setup can also be used in another session. We are going to repeat this setup to measure, to investigate, is carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide concentration a factor in photosynthesis? How will we do that? We will check use of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Can chlorophyll concentration affect the rate of photosynthesis? How can we do that? Increasing the number of pondweeds. Can temperature affect the rate of photosynthesis? How can we do that? Using water baths at different temperatures. It has been a nice session. Remember, we have investigated the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. And our conclusion based on the observation is that as light intensity increases, which in this case was being measured by decrease in the distance between the lamp and the water bath or the setup, rate of photosynthesis increases because light is the source of energy for the process of photosynthesis. We'll continue investigating the other factors in our next sessions. Join us and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Top Notch TV, 
See you. Bye-bye.